evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world. Tonight, we're going to have a little bit of fun. I have a fun technique for you featuring die cover plates. Now, if you're not familiar with cover plates, they are these large dies that cover the front of an A2 card. We've designed ours to be just a little bit smaller than an A2 card to match our Master Layouts 2 dies. That's how most of our cover plates are. We do have some mini slimline ones too. And they work with, these work with Master Layouts 2 to create a little framed area. But then that whole panel covers the front of the card. And that's why they're called cover plates. And I have a really fun technique to share with you. But before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Get that out of the way. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Better than horrible. Hey, everybody. Look at this. Isn't this cool? Look at these people from all over the world. I know. It's so much fun. I am so glad to see everybody. Um, about midway through the live, Tom, remind me to do a little housekeeping. I've got to let everybody know something, but I want to do it in the middle of the live when we have the most people here because everybody's just getting here now. Okay? Duly noted. Will you write that down? <laughs> remind me. Done. <laughs> okay. We'll do it right around your word of the day if you have one. Do you have a word of the day? Uh, I might. Yes, okay. I might. Okay. Well, fingers crossed for that. Well, welcome everyone. It is great to see you. Let's take a look at what I'm going to be using today. So this is our diamond plate right here. And I really like this one. Let me show you what it looks like when it's cut out. I cut about 300 of them today because I was playing, but this is what it looks like when it's all cut out. And I really like this one. I think this is a great one. This one, the basket weave, any kind of stencil that's kind of geometric and just a background, not stencil, cover plate that's just geometric, more of a background kind of cover plate. Now, this Dahlia one that we have would work. It wouldn't be too bad, but if you have something that's a little more just geometric like this, it's going to work great for this technique. Okay, so to get started, you can do this technique with all kinds of different stamps. You can use line art stamps. You can use solid stamps. Um, I have a few silhouette sets here. Let me find another one here. This one, this one's a great one too. This is the Sweet Memory Stamp by Argita. This big flower, any big flower will work. Pretty much any big image that you have will work for this technique. But the one thing that you do have to know about this technique is you want to use something that is all one stamp. So I was thinking about earlier if I should maybe do it with these leaves in autumn silhouettes. And I thought, no, you can't do that because you have to be able to stamp the image in the same spot more than once. And if you were stamping a bunch of these, I mean, maybe you could cluster four of them and then, then use it. But it really works better with a big image like this from Holiday Tapestry something like this from Autumn Silhouettes, maybe this from Natural Silhouettes, or something big like any of Argita's big flowers. Okay, so also Hannah has a lot of big flowers like this too, and Melanie has some big flowers. You just want a big, bold kind of design. So let's do our first one with... Should we do a... Let's do a silhouette image. I'll use Autumn Silhouettes for this. I will actually try to make two of these tonight. All right. Welcome, everybody. It's great to see you. Okay, so I'm going to use my Misty, and I highly recommend you use your Misty stamping tool or even, hi, Christine, welcome to your first live, um, a Misty or any stamping platform that you have because you want to secure this piece of cardstock somewhere. So if you have to stamp it more than once, you can. And then you want to be able to stamp it in the same spot on a second piece of cardstock. Okay, so 
I've got my cardstock cut down to three and three quarters by five and a half. You could cut this piece out with master layouts one if you want to, but it's really not necessary because you're going to end up cutting it a second time and you're going to end up cutting it with the die plate. So if you just want to cut it with your paper cutter, about three and three quarter inches by five is a good size. I do recommend cutting both of your pieces out with the same size cardstock that you're going to use for your project. So I have two of these cut and I am ready to go here. Now I'm going to try my first card with this image here from the Autumn Silhouettes stamp set. Welcome, Julie. Look at all our first timers. This is so cool. This is great. Okay. So if, if Tom does flash stuff up on the screen and I don't catch it, please know that I am welcoming you. However, um, I'm probably looking down a lot because I want to make sure that I do this right. Okay, so I'm going to put this on my cardstock right about here because I do want to cut a tiny little bit off at the edge on the side and the bottom. Now, I will be cutting it off with the cover plate, so I'm not... Ooh, did you see that grab onto there? So I'm not too worried about it. I could actually go up in there just a little more like that to get the most image you can. Okay, so now I'm going to... What is that on there? I'm going to pick this up. Let's make sure it's in the right position. And this cardstock is snug against that corner. Okay, and then we got to put it back again. Now I'm going to take my black ink pad. I, I'm going to say that this really looks the best with black. Black and white really looks striking with this. You can use other light colors with black ink and it would look very good. But I tried it with some other ink colors and I find that black really is the best color for this technique. And that's layering weight? This is layering weight white, yep. Okay, so I'm inking this stamp up really well with the black onyx. And then I'm gonna stamp it. I'm gonna use my Chucky tool to put some pressure on it, but you can use your sleeve. Okay, so that's a good first impression, but I'm gonna go in with a little bit more ink and really darken it up a little bit. Okay, and that should do it. All right, so there's my first one. I've got that done. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing on another card. Put it right in the same spot on the Misty, and I'm going to ink it up again. Now I'm showing this to you using a solid image first, but then I also will try to show you using that line art image because I think, you know, you might want to see how it looks on both. All right, hopefully I didn't shift that. If I did, I'm just going to restamp it. That looks pretty good. Okay, maybe I will restamp it one more time. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I have two identical panels here. And this is how you wanna start. You wanna start with those identical panels. All right, let me clean this up and just get the misty out of the way for a little bit here. I'm just using my tidy towel to clean this stamp. And I'm cleaning my misty so I don't get any ink on me. Okay. Get that out of the way. Now, I have these two panels here. So the next thing I wanna do is I want to die cut one of these panels with this cover plate. So I'm going to center it. Let's get the die cutting machine out first. Okay. Diane wants to know, is Tom your husband? <laughs> Last time I checked, Diane. <laughs> yes, he is my husband of 37 years. We've been married for 37 years. It's a long time. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so now I'm placing this 
right in the center of this piece of cardstock. And if you're worried about it shifting or anything like that, you can use something like pixie tape or masking magic to hold it down. So let's see. I want to make sure that it's even top to bottom too. So we'll just put a little pixie tape on either side so it doesn't shift in the machine going through. And then we're going to cut that out. Okay. Looks like a lot of people are beating us, Tom, in our 37 years. Some people are Thai. Some people 47. I'm seeing a lot of different. Some really long times. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Why is my finger green? I didn't even use green ink. Probably because there was green on my tidy towel. Let me clean that off with a little Windex. Get that off. I might have to pick a different tidy towel. I've got four of them in there, but I don't. I have to take them home and wash them and throw them in the laundry. Okay. That's how I clean my tidy towels. I just throw them in the laundry. I don't put them in the dryer, but in the laundry, in the washer. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit because it's catching my shirt here. <laughs> Plus, I want you to be able to see this a little better. Okay, so now I'm going to poke the corner here. Poke the other corner and get that started. And then let's see if I can just pull this off. I should be able to. Okay. So there is that design. Now that looks awful, doesn't it? Why would anybody want to do that? That looks terrible. <laughs> but let me uh, poke this all out here because I'm going to have to use this again. So I was poking some of these out earlier and honestly, they were all over the place. I had to bring the vacuum in. Tom was laughing. He said, no, I was, I was doing it over the trash can and Tom walked in to talk to me about something. And he said, not one of those things that you're poking out is going in the trash can. And they were all <laughs> over the floor. You know how it is, right? We get these little pieces all over the floor. And I know this is a heck of a way to watch a video of somebody poking out all the holes of their cover plate, but you know, it'll be worth it because I'm going to need to use it again for my next card and it'll be all ready to go and we won't have to wait. And right now it's early enough in the video where nobody's too frustrated <laughs> yet with the amount of time it's taking me to make the card. <laughs> okay. You can see, boy, it'd be nice if you could use this as shaker fill, right? That would be fun. Wow. Look at all the, look at all the different anniversaries coming up for people. That's wonderful. Congratulations to all of you for sticking it out. <laughs> what did my dad say? Did we ever tell them what my dad said about my mom? My dad he said a lot of things about your mom. Oh my God. He was so funny. I think we probably told them this, but we have new people here so we can say it again. And you know what? Maybe some people forgot. My dad used to say, I take, I take your mother everywhere. He's, he, well, he say, I take my wife everywhere I go. This way I don't have to kiss her goodbye. <laughs> okay. So now we've got this panel and this panel. So what we're going to do next is I have a couple more of these already pre-cut, right? So what we want to do is we want to stack them like this so that we've got a little bit of dimension. Now, the good news, I already did stack two of them together. So I just have to stack this one that I just stamped right on top. So let me get a little piece of cardstock here so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, my dad was funny. He was actually a stand-up comedian. So he, uh, he was funny all the time though, even when he wasn't on stage. All right, so this, when you, when you do this, you don't have to like glue every single little piece. What I do is I just glue along the sides and then I just glue big areas like these zigzags right here. 
I'm going to glue those and these in here like that. Now I, you know, because we're live, I can't like speed this part up. I actually have to do the glue. But that's all right. You never know what, what we'll talk about next. <laughs> now, some people <laughs> like to glue all in there. You can if you want, but it's really just not that necessary. It does hold together pretty well, but if it does make you feel better, you could put a little dot on each of these, you know, just to have a little bit of something in between there. So, Tom, if there's any questions anybody has, just go ahead and shout them out. And I do want you guys to know that we have a new release coming up. It's always a very exciting time of the of the month for us. We have um, a new kit this time, a full-blown kit coming. And our illustrators have some beautiful new sets. We have some fun dyes. So I'm very excited about that. I almost put my finger in the glue. All right, let's just do a little bit there and a little bit here. Okay, now we're going to have to glue again. I know I put dots there, so I might as well do them here too. Okay. Oh, that's a lot. Not that much. Okay. Now I'm going to place this on top and I'm going to just shift it around until it looks pretty even. You start stacking them and it just gives you so much more dimension. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Kim wants to know if a lot of the sold out stamps will be back in stock soon. Now that is, is a question. I have no idea. Hard um, to tell. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't answer those kinds of questions. I can answer technique questions and stuff, but I, I just don't know because we're, you know, we're dealing with supply chain issues and we're dealing with just a whole bunch of stuff with, uh, just employment shortages and stuff and shipping delays. And so what used to be an easy, oh, I'm struggling with this. What used to be easy to tell, to tell you is not quite so easy anymore. All right. That's pretty good. Kind of like the little bit of dimension I get there. I don't know if it squishes out a little bit more when I stamp it, but I have enough glue on my fingers now, but I think the two underneath are not perfect, so there we go. Okay, so now I've got three of them glued together. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this on top of here and line it all up. You could use spray adhesive if you want, Sherry, but I really like using liquid glue. Number one, I'm not a big fan of inhaling spray adhesive. And number two, I feel like I don't need all that much glue and I can get it to look pretty good. So now we're gonna line this up. Now this is a little tricky. You gotta take your time and find exactly where it lines up, especially when you're dealing with the lines in there. Did you see that? I think I've got it in the right spot. So that's what it's gonna end up looking like. So let's put a little bit of glue on the back here. And again, we don't have to like over glue but I just love the dimension that you get with this. I've, I've used some spray adhesives in the past and I don't know what it is, but like I get them all over the place and I'm not like thrilled about breathing it in. So I prefer a liquid glue. Um, there's also, you know, very thin adhesive sheets that you can attach to these kinds of things and you can use them before you die cut. Um, again, I, it, it works and a lot of people like it. I find that it gets my dyes a little sticky. So I just tend to cut it out with the paper and do the old fashioned little bit of glue, good to go kind of thing. Okay, Bethany's Connect Glue is not coming out of the bottle. Does the glue get clogged and what should she do? So for something like that, feel free to contact customer service. They've got a whole plethora of ideas for you that can help you with that. But generally, 
you always want to tap your glue down when you're done using it to make sure that the glue leaves the little stainless steel tip. I always burp my glue by squeezing it and then letting go so it sucks it back down. And then I always clean my cap and then put this right back on top. If you let this sit out for a half an hour, it's gonna clog because it's gonna dry in there. So you definitely always want to seal it up, you know, before, even if you're working, just seal it up. But customer service can help you with those kinds of questions as well. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna line this up. I'm gonna take my time. And the other thing I love about liquid glue is it's really forgiving. So if, you know, oh, that doesn't look right. I need to shift it to the left. I need to shift it to the right. Liquid glue will allow you to do that. Okay. <laughs> so look how pretty that is. But now you've got all that texture on top. Now I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm just going to eke those scissors just underneath that cover plate because it's not completely dry yet. So I have a little bit of flex time in here. Another reason why I like the glue. I'm going in with the scissors. And I'm just cutting away the excess. pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing down here, just slipping my scissors kind of on an angle. Can you see how that, how I'm doing that? Down into the frame. Not cutting it like sideways, but like I'm slipping my scissors down in there. This way I don't ruin that edge. Now you can pre-cut this with your paper cutter, but I find that just without fail, I end up um, cutting it a little too small. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got that perfect cover plate with all of that beautiful texture. Whenever anybody sees it, they say, oh my gosh, how did you get that? Get it stamped down in there? Well, you didn't, but it kind of looks like that. So it's pretty fun. Um, I made a sample earlier and I walked it around and I always like can tell if it's going to be a good technique if the people that I show it to say, wait, how did you do that? And then I think, okay, that's good. <laughs> if it's too obvious, then it's not a great technique, right? Won't make a great technique video. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit of black cardstock here and I am going to cut this down. I have got two here. That's thick cardstock. I'm going to cut this first at five and a half because I don't need the whole thing. And then our cover plates, you could cut this next panel with master layouts too with the plain die, but I'm going to cut it right here with a paper cutter. Um, so I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger than three and a half. So it's going up to the three and five eighths of an inch mark. And then this die measures four and three quarters this way. So I'm going to go up to four and seven eighths. And then that should make a nice layer around the background. Like that. Okay, where'd my tape go? Here it is. Three of them in front of me. So I'm going to tape that. Liquid glue, the reason I love liquid glue mostly is because it's forgiving. Because when you don't glue something down properly or you're trying to line things up, liquid glue gives you some movement. It wiggles around. Adhesive doesn't do as good of a job as that, of that. All right, so now we can pick a cardstock color to put this on. And I think I'm gonna use some, let's see, is this the color I wanna use? Yeah. I think that's no, kind of dark. I'm going to use Stormy Sky. It's a little lighter. And let me get my big paper cutter out from down here. So I'm going to cut this at four and a quarter inches. I do know that 
are um, a lot of you have been waiting for those little trios of ink, the, the spruces, the carnations, all of those just came back in stock today. So if you've been waiting for those little ink cubes in those trio colors, they finally came in today. And I saw so many people on my team working on them, getting them packaged. Okay, so this is the stormy sky. And I'm gonna put this piece right onto there. Yeah, you definitely could do pink. Pink would be beautiful. You could do whatever color you want here. I'm going with a gray, a little more neutral. So Julie wants to know what's the difference between a cover plate and a die? Uh, a die is a cover plate is a die, but a cover plate is a full plate that covers the front of your card, but it's a die. It's just not like a, you know, like a flower die or, or some small die. It's a full cover plate. It would be a good sympathy card. This would be a gorgeous sympathy card. Let me see what I have in here. Um, ooh, here is so sorry. How about that? That would be good for sympathy, right? I could use that. Okay, I'll use that. That was a good, good choice for a sympathy card. Now this you can just tape right on or you can put it on with a little glue, liquid glue if you want. But we'll put it right here. I'll just overlap it a little bit onto the wildflowers there. There we go. And so there is that card. Look at all of that dimension. Isn't that fun? A lot of viewers say that's a very striking card. Yes. Striking. Someone told me I have a very striking face, <laughs> but they asked me how many times I was struck there. <laughs> oh, gosh. So here's another version of the card. I turned that one into a thank you card, and I just put the greeting over the wildflowers there. But I kind of like this one a little bit better. I like the where that greeting is positioned. And you can see by stacking those dies you really get the full feel of all of that dimension. All right, so we'll do a more colorful one, not in the stamping part, but we'll do a, a more colorful background. I'll do a pink background on my next one because I like that suggestion. Okay, so let's get two more pieces of white cardstock and we're gonna use this one by Argita. I know a lot of you just recently got this one. So I think this will be a good one to use. And you can kind of see that it still works on a line art image as opposed to something that's so, you know, dense and silhouette like. <laughs> silhouette like. <laughs> okay. So let's get another piece of white cardstock. I know I have one somewhere. Here we go. And I'm going to cut two panels that equal, let's zoom out a little two panels that equal three and three quarters by five. The first stamp that I used was from Autumn Silhouettes, but you can use any silhouette stamp set you want. That stamp set is on order, but another one that would work great in place of it, let me just show you how similar. So this is the Autumn Silhouettes and this is the Natural Silhouettes. And this one is in stock. So if you're looking for something very wildflower looking, this would work as well. You could get that one right in there and you would get a very similar look. Okay. So I'm going to put this aside for a second and we're going to get started on this one. Now I need my Misty again and I'm going to put this up into the top corner of the Misty. And then for this one, you gotta kind of find like where you want the image to go. And I think, you know, something like this on an angle coming down is gonna look the best. So I'm gonna do that. It's a big stamp. Okay, so let's 
Let's see how this looks. How about... I got to look at it a couple different ways. Yeah, I think I think this will look the best. Ooh, what did I get on there? We can't have anything on there. I think my fingers might be inky. So let's go right like that. I don't like it to go all the way to the edge when I'm doing a design like this. Okay, we'll do it like that. I think that will look good. Let me get the stamp picked up first and then I'll worry about the magnet. I do wanna get it in the right position though. Okay. It's a new stamp, so it's really sticky. All right, now once we have the stamp on there, then for this one, I am gonna stamp it more than one time because it is a brand new stamp. Okay, so now here's what I wanna tell you guys because I, I wanted to tell you something about our release party coming up. I want you to know that our release party is just going to be on YouTube on Tuesday night because we're gonna do it as a premiere. Tom and I will be chatting live in the comments, but it's our daughter Alicia's birthday. So we are gonna be spending some time with her. And so we are just gonna have our phones and we're gonna be chatting live with all of you guys in the comments. So we hope that you'll come. We always have so much fun chatting with you guys, but if you are normally tuning in from Facebook, just head over to YouTube and if you don't have a YouTube account, it's super easy to sign up for one. You don't have to ever post anything or anything like that, but then it allows you to comment and chat as well. So I just wanted to let you know that um, we will be on uh, YouTube on Tuesday night. Okay, the name of this stamp set is called Sweet Memories. All right, so I have my first one there, and now I am gonna clean this because there's a good chance that I'm gonna touch something weird so I'm gonna just take a little paper towel and just get that off of there and dry it okay then I'm gonna put my next piece down same way okay. yes I'm so excited next Tuesday night is our brand new release I'm gonna start sneak peeks later this week. Usually I start them on the weekend, but I think I'm going to start these sneak peeks probably, well, probably on Friday at some point. Just maybe one peek on Friday and then Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, you'll get lots of peeks. Okay. So there we go. Got that stamped. Always make sure you reposition so you don't double stamp. Well, I'm sorry that you have trouble commenting on YouTube. You always do have to be signed into your YouTube account in order to comment. So I don't know if that might be it. Sometimes, some, especially on my app, if I signed out or I updated something, sometimes it makes me sign back in. And then I'll be able to see everything, but I won't be able to comment. Okay, so now we've got two, once again, that are identical. I know, and it's so much fun. I feel like both of us get to focus more on what you're saying during a premiere, and we get to comment back, and I don't know. It's very fun. I, lo I love doing lives. I love this because, you know, I can chat with you in real time, um, you know, verbally chat with you, but I also love the premiere. We did a one release party as a premiere, and I had so much fun just chatting and commenting and was very, very fun. So we'll have a great time. And that's gonna be next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. So set your alarm. And another thing I wanted to tell you about our YouTube channel and our videos is that when, if your computer is set to the right time, um, all of our YouTube and Facebook videos actually show up in your time zone. So 
if it shows up for me, it's going to say seven o'clock, but my friends that live on the East Coast, it's automatically going to say eight o'clock. It's going to tell you the right time. I know a lot of people are worried and they feel like they have to do math to figure it out, but you don't have to. As long as your computer clock is set properly, um, you know, you have to go in and set your time zone on your computer. Make sure that's set properly. And if that's set properly, everything on YouTube, Facebook, lives, it'll always come up at, on, at the right time. Okay, so once again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to place this on top. And then I am going to tape it down because I feel like I have better luck that way. I'm using pixie tape. You can use pixie tape or washi tape, whatever you have. Um, pixie tape I just love. Because it doesn't tear. Masking magic will work too. All right, here we go. Yeah, they're fun. I mean, cover plates are just gorgeous just as a background it it's a, they're a little more interesting than just an embossing folder so i love them for just backgrounds but this technique is so much fun that it just stretches your tools and don't you love when you know you can go back tonight and look in your craft room and say oh i have this cover plate or i have that cover plate i want to try that and you you know you can just try with what you already have we, we have some new cover plates coming, but not on this release. But they are fun. Okay, look at that hideous thing. Doesn't look like anything, right? And you'd look at it and you'd go, oh, I don't know about that. But hey, I don't have to punch this all out this time. So we can put this away. <laughs> All right, now once again, let's just line it up and take a look at it. So if you don't like all of that dimension, you definitely can finagle that around until it looks perfect. And then you can do it nice and flat like that. And you'll still get the beauty of the background. Let's zoom in a little bit. You still get the, oh, I shifted it. Um, but you still get the beauty of the background, but you, you know, it, there's not a lot of depth and dimension to it. So maybe you like that a little bit better and you don't want so much dimension. But once again, I did glue a couple together here and I feel like having that extra dimension just really brings it forward. Let's take a look at it. Maybe it won't look as good on this design. I want to see what it looks like with all the dimension. Maybe I'll do this one flatter. Because I feel like with the line art images, it might look better a little flatter. Although, once you get it right... That is kind of cool, isn't it? I think I like it flatter. Let's do this one flat. I'll save that for another card. Okay, so we're just going to glue this right onto this panel. Yeah, I think you're right. Those of you who said that you think it looked better flatter. So with the solid images, the silhouette images, all that extra dimension is really cool. But for these line art images, I'm thinking it looks better flatter. And I think you guys are out there. Most of you probably agree. I think there's just not enough black to connect it all together when it gets too high up. But that's all right. We caught it before we made the error. And then I can use that other panel that I did for a, another silhouette one next time I want to make one of these. And also, you know... Just stacking cover plates and then putting them on a white background really is beautiful. And it's different than embossing, than an embossing folder, because you actually see the cutouts. You can touch the cutouts. It's so pretty. I'll show you what I mean. We'll look at it again. Okay, and do a line over here. 
and do a line over here. I think I did this one already. And I'll do the dots again because now I feel like that might have made a difference. Get a little off of that one. And so by cleaning the bottle, what I mean basically is, did I go down here? Yeah, I did. What I mean basically is I tap it and then I burp it to suck that glue down there. And then I take like a little spray of some kind. You could even do it with water and just clean off the top so that it's nice and clean. And then I cap it right away. And this way, it's that won't clog. You can use a very small um, straight pin if you have one to get it out. You could soak it in hot water a little bit if it clogs, but usually they don't clog. They're pretty good. All right, so here we go. Starting with just one leaf and then kind of moving things around until they start to look like they're lining up. Looks good there, looks good down there. I think we got it. There we go. And it even looks pretty with that extra layer around the outside. If you want to just leave it like that, you certainly can. And you can mount that right on the front of your card. Because we we centered that when we cut it, when you know, when we cut this out, we centered it. So that means that when you put the cover plate on top, it's gonna look centered. So let's let's leave it like that. And then we can just do a very thin little black border. And then I don't know who it was. One of you suggested pink. I love that idea. I think innocent pink might be a perfect color for it. I think that will look really pretty together. So let's cut this panel out. Oh yeah, you've got to try this. I can't wait to see what you guys do. I know that our Facebook group is going to be filled with beautiful inspiration from you guys. But even if you don't want to share, definitely try it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to score this one at the five and a half inch mark. <laughs> We've got 2,500 people here tonight. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys so much. That's very exciting to see you all. We're triple streaming on three platforms. So I'm going to ask you now, just do a shameful ask. But if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and hitting the thumbs up, that would be awesome. Um, it would be super to have you as a subscriber if you're on YouTube. If you're watching on either YouTube or Facebook, if you give me a thumbs up, that really does help my channel. Okay, so this uh, this measured three and three quarters of an inch by five. So you could use Master Layouts 1, and we could go to three and seven eighths if we're cutting it by hand. Three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. Now, this isn't going to give us as much uh, white border, but it does give us that little white border around here. So let's just see how we like it. I think it's good. I think doing one like this is fine to see how we like it. There we go. And that does make it easier. As you can see, it makes it a lot easier than having to cut around it like I did for my first one. But unlike my first one, let me find my first one, you know, I have a lot more, it's hard to see, let's do this here. I have a lot more border around the outside of this one than I do this one because I left that panel behind there. But I kind of like it because the image extends past it. So it's kind of fun. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you all for, Everybody who said I'm already a subscriber, that's awesome. I appreciate it. I'm running out of tape. All right, we'll pop that on there. So this one could be a card of friendship. You could add a big greeting on here, but I really love these strip sentiments um, for these kinds of cards. So thank you. This would make a really nice little thank you card. I like 
the big bold image with just the tiny greeting. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Okay. So we'll pop this little thank you greeting on here. And I like how it's balanced where most of the action is down a little bit and you've got that plain bit on top. So there we go. There's the pink one and here's the gray one. Now let me show you another one that I had made earlier. Let me get rid of this and we'll put a different color there to make it easier to see. Okay, here we go. There. Okay, so there's the two we made tonight. Let me show you. I did a lighter gray. Oh, look at what I did. Did I not put tape on this? Oh, <laughs> I didn't put tape on it. Oh my gosh, where's my brain? I didn't tape this on. Well, that was pretty crazy to be able to line that black up. What? I, I remember taping it. I don't know about you guys, but I remember taping it. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now I did this image on on light gray, and you can see what that looks like. And I didn't do any stacking on that one. So that is kind of fun, the light gray. And then I also did a blue one and I used, do you guys remember this stamp set? This was, I think, part of a holiday kit. It's called Holiday Tapestry. This one was very popular. I mean, we must, we, we've re reordered this one probably a hundred times already. This image right here is so nice for just so many things. We, we put it out as a holiday set because of the greetings, but honestly, gorgeous in the fall, gorgeous in the summer. It has nothing Christmassy or holiday-ish in here. It's just a big flourish. So it works for anything. And so let me show you what that looks like. I'll zoom in here. I did that, that one and I did this on sea glass. So you can see the texture in there. So once again, I will tell you the names of the stamp sets. So this one here is um, Sweet Memories. This one is Autumn Silhouettes, but you can also use Natural Silhouettes because I know Autumn Silhouettes is out of stock. And this is Holiday Tapestry. But isn't that great? So I know a lot of you have this one. So if you have this and a cover plate, you should definitely give that a try. And you could see, I mean, when you look up close and you see all the, the texture in there, it's so fun. But you can see on this one with the deeper. Now, this is three layers. This one is two layers. So you can see this is really deep dimension. This is not as deep. And then this is just a single layer. So depending on how much dimension you want in there, you can either go three high, two high, or just one single little cover plate. But I wanted to show you because I had, these are glued together. If I put another one on top like this, and then I put that onto a quarter sheet of cardstock just like that and turn that into a card front. Isn't that just beautiful? I mean, that is such a pretty background, even if you just wanted to put a die cut on top or you wanted to do some florals down the side and make it like a trellis. So there's so many ways. It kind of feels a little like lattice work, you know? So this is great, just stacking those die cuts and then gluing the whole thing down onto the same exact color. You get such a gorgeous look. It'd be a beautiful wedding card. It really steps it up. You love the deeper depth, depth, Teresa? Yeah, I like it too. I love the deeper depth. I didn't think it was going to work on this style. Um, and I probably could have definitely done it on this one, but I just wanted to try it for color and see how it looked. So I just threw it together really fast earlier today. So those are the cards. Now, Tom, did you have a word of the day? I'm so sorry. I went, <laughs> I want to hear your word of the day. Well, I had, I had a word of the day, but I <clears throat> thought of a different word of the day because um, we'll save that one for later. But 
in honor of all the folks celebrating so many of those uh, anniversaries and times together. Um, I think somebody, a few people asked, well, gosh, how do you do it? And um, the word came to <laughs> mind, friendurance. What? Friendurance? Friendurance. Friendurance. The word of the day. Oh, I like that word, friendurance. <laughs> That's how you get all those years racked up, right? That's right. My mom always said to me, find somebody that can be your best friend because we all get old and ugly. <laughs> so you're my best friend, Tom. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are best friends. Friendurance. Word Friendurance. Of the day. That's a good word of the day. I love that. <laughs> My mom was funny too. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to give these cards away. So. All right. We've got two cards to give away. Two cards here. to give away. So let's go with the 3D depth one. Three deep. That's what that means. Three deep. 3D. <laughs> All right. Let's start with a cheesy drum roll, please. All right. <laughs> Okay, this card goes to the lucky winner, who is Tanya Przybyszewski. Yes, Tanya. Tanya. Congratulations, All right. Tanya. All right. All right, Tanya. So you get that one. And then this beautiful pink card. Love All the right. pink. That was a great suggestion. All right. Mm -hmm. And the pink, beautiful pink thank you card goes to Paula Polin. Paula Polin. Paula. All right. Well, ladies, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com and we will send these cards out to you. Well, this was so much fun tonight. I had a great time with you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this technique and I hope you'll dig through your stash and find those big, bold stamps and some cover plates and you'll give this technique a try. Well, Tom and I will be back on Thursday with another Crafternoon Live at 12 Central Time, noon Central Time. And then I'll be back over the weekend with another five minute card video. And then remember, mark your calendars for next Tuesday. We'll be broadcasting live, not live, a premiere on YouTube only. That will be our release party. So that's June 13th. Lucky 13. All right, everybody. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. It always makes my day to see you guys out here and all of your wonderful, kind comments. And we just love being with you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.